Hello and welcome back to 9 Before M Garden Style. Today we're touring the award-winning rose gardens at David Austin Roses. Home of the English Rose, a style of rose created by the renowned rose breeder David Austin. The Rose Gardens at David Austin Roses is one of the most expansive and beautiful rose gardens in the world. Roses complement multiple garden styles, traditional, contemporary, modern, and even formal. Roses have a place in almost every garden. This comprehensive tour of the David Austin Rose Garden will highlight everything that is good about roses, the unrivaled diversity of color, size, shape, the exceptional long life, the abundance and flowering season. This is everything that you need and will want to see to get a good understanding of how you can utilize roses in your own personal gardens. So here we have some beautiful potted roses just to show you the flexibility of roses. They can go into the ground. There's so many different types, but these are all in large pots. Vanessa Bell, it's a beautiful English shrub rose here. Here is a Vanessa Bell that's been trained into a tree form. You can do that with roses as well. Another large potted rose. Oh, look at this, because this is the multiple petals and that kind of gives you that English rose look and that's what's so beautiful that was new in 2015 but we're at David Austin and these are some of the best roses in the world developed by one of the you know most prolific and best rose breeders in the world and look at that rambler covering this entire wall and it's Belvedere it's a rambling rose there behind these potted roses and again the tree rose is not something I've ever really purchased on my own but I think I may leave here with one today this is grace this is the English rose standard trained into a tree form to really bring those flowers up to eye height Ronald Dahl this rose is new in 2016 beautiful look at this is a shallow cup on that beautiful roses and all of these are in pots just to show you that flexibility of what you can get with the roses. We're going to hear and see. We're here. We haven't even made it into the gardens. We're going to start out with the long garden. There are multiple gardens here, but we're going to be with the long garden first. I came here today because these are some of the best roses in the world. I've grown this one before. Olivia Rose Austin. It's a shallow cup rose. Look at that. Just a beautiful rose. Now the naming conventions, they do change up a bit. And so if you want to correct that in the comments, please feel free. But David Austin produced some of the most beautiful roses in the world. And these are available in the UK and in the US. And this is something you don't see much, but I love the way this is set up. This is grown covered there. It's been trimmed back beautifully. Simple single petal rose here. If you look like this, looks like an apple blossom. If you think about it, it's because they're in the same family. But it's the English rose look. Full petals, multiple petals that David Austin, you know, thrived on. And when he created roses here in his time, and the company still goes on with that. But it is the multiple petals and the beautiful fragrance. They didn't sacrifice the fragrance for the petals. Just beautiful roses here, all the way around. And here's a beautiful Charles Darwin rose. There are multiple gardens at David Austin Roses. Let's start with the Long Garden, which displays shrub roses in a formal bedded style along a central corridor. This is a formal bedding style for roses, but it is accessible to the home gardener if it is scaled down to the appropriate size for the home garden. Desimona, beautiful there. It is a little rambling rose. Look at that small rambling rose with those small petals climbing up this pillar here behind. So this garden is filled with bedded roses and we have some wonderful ramblers as well you can see that this is an old rambling rose look at the size of this stem on this rose this rose has been here for many years just rambling along thomas a beckett this is new for 2013 and now this is another freshly planted section here these aren't in bloom not yet you can see those are going to bloom look they're going to have a red bloom on those If you love roses, 
if you ever have the opportunity to make it here, this is a beautiful location for anyone who loves English roses. Now, you can see these are the right way to grow roses. Uh, they're deeply mulched. You don't see any weeds underneath. They have a lot of space and there's an irrigation system put in. And they're behind these beautiful low cut hedges. This is a beautiful way to bed shrub roses. So as we continue on down the long garden, you see now the colors are getting a little more vibrant. These are a bit more brighter. Let's see which roses we have in this particular section. Here's the Mayflower. And then a rambling rose behind that gold finch. It's not in bloom, but it has a nice rose hip started in there. That's a beautiful little rose. And I love the growth habit of this one. You can see it's been trimmed and cut back really low, but it's just kind of really filled in and low. And I think that that would be a great way to keep a rose. And the flower is also really beautiful and very fragrant. And the poet's wife right now is in full bloom. Beautiful, beautiful English rose. And here on the end is Skylark. This is the best place to see all these wonderful David Austin roses. I get the catalog each year. They will send a catalog to you if you request it in the US or in the UK. They will send you a catalog. They'll probably send them other places as well. Check into that. But it's nothing like seeing these wonderful roses in person. Now there's a lot of Desdemona and I'm seeing it all over the place, but it is such a beautiful rose. So I'm not surprised that they've used it to fill in a lot of space here in the garden. And then Lady of Charlotte is a beautiful yellow orangish kind of rose and more orange than yellow, double petaled, just kind of incurved, deep cupped, beautiful rose. And behind it is a rambling rose. Goldfinch again in the back, rambling rose. And here at the front is Queen of Sweden. I've grown this rose before, shallow cupped, but look how beautiful those rose petals are. And you can see here the long garden is just a straight line row of beautiful shrub roses. And we reached kind of a center courtyard here for the long garden. Now I'm a huge fan of the multi-petaled, incurved, rosette style, in old English roses, but some people do like the five-petaled variety. And here are some beautiful ramblers again along this back wall, and you can see how beautiful they are. Now, a lot of ramblers are single blooming. These have all bloomed already, but you can tell by the size of the stems how exactly old they are. Let me give you a good look at this one. Look at the size of that stem. It's the size of a small tree. This is an incredibly old rose bush. 
Here's some beautiful single petal David Austin roses. Now this almost looks like a species rose, but look at the large amount of thorns on this one. I would expect to see this in a species. It says Scottish rose. I think that's a species rose. This is not a normal shrub rose. This is something unique. Look at the size, the coloration on those rose hips also. It's very different. More single petal roses. I like them. That's where they all started, but I do love the old English look that David Austin has developed with the more full petal roses with the wonderful fragrance. But look at those rose hips. This again would be a species rose. Uh, looks a bit older, developed quite a while ago. The Long Garden is absolutely beautiful. So we're now leaving the Long Garden. We spent a lot of time there because it's such a beautiful garden. And this is the Pergola Pathway, which is gonna be filled with wonderful climbers and rambling roses. Now if they're climbers, they branch out a lot at the bottom. These I think have been trained a bit better, so these are mostly just climbing roses. You have some beautiful ramblers and climbers here along this wall. And now leaving a long garden, I'm moving into the Renaissance garden, which is a beautiful garden. Nice parterres here. I've seen these pictures online before. Beautiful, some freshly planted. And the roses here, it's still shrub roses predominantly. You don't have any ramblers here, just shrub roses. Tightly clipped to fit inside these beautiful little unclaves here behind the hedges. Again, a Susan William Ellis, beautiful rose. These are all very low. They've been clipped very low to fit this aesthetic. And we do have some climbing roses here and in, in the back there. Now those are in the shade, so those are gonna be shaded most of the day, but they seem to be doing quite well. Pretty sure this is facing in a direction where they would get a lot of sun, afternoon sun. Here's the other side. It's beautiful parterre and roses. Gabriel Oak, it's a very nice color here on those petals. And I'm talking about the leaves actually, it has a nice red to the leaves on that. It's a beautiful single petal, yellow rose. Tottering by gently, it's a beautiful name. We're moving around here to the side. This is gonna start off on the left side. Again, these shrub roses have been trimmed very low in the Renaissance garden. And there's the pergola way, pergola pathway, which is just here. We just went down that. It's Queen of Sweden. I've grown this rose before. It's a beautiful rose. It keeps catching my eye every time I go past it. Floss. I love these petals packed into this rosette, incurved. Just a beautiful rose. 
As I continue through the Renaissance Guard, roses here have been allowed to develop a little bit taller. They're about three feet tall. But behind, look at this massive rambler. And I didn't even recognize it as a rose at first because I didn't look up and realize that that's a rose and not a hedge. But that is a massive rambler, one of the largest I've ever seen. Filling this space. Here's Summer Song. It's a nice English shrub rose. Only one blue on the right. So that is the right side. Let's check the other side here in the Renaissance Garden. I love this garden. I love the way they have these roses trimmed down low so you can really appreciate the entire view of the rose from all sides. Princess Anne. It's a nice open faced rose. Pom pom. So those petals are just loose and open, frilling out. Gardens, which is a garden I do hope to see in London. But here's a Kew Garden named Rose. Appears to be a white rose, five petals. Nice coloration. I'm pretty sure this is more Lady of Shallot in front here. And this at the very back is a very tall rose, which is about 10 feet tall, maybe 12 feet tall. It's a beautiful white rose there, very tall. But the poet's wife right now is absolutely beautiful and splendid in every garden that I see it. We're gonna go into what will be likely my favorite part here, which is gonna be the lion garden, which is gonna show roses with some of his best companion plants. And here we have wonderful roses which are blended in, bedded with some really great plants. I love the fact that they have every single thing named in this garden, so you can get a good view of the plants, their names, and how they look with these roses. A nice peony, but that won't bloom until the spring. When this peony is blooming, there'll be many months before this rose is gonna bloom. But look at these beautiful rose hips here on this old Rogusta Alba. Charles de Mills, which is not really in bloom right now. I wish it was. I think there's one bloom left here on this Charles de Mills. You can see it's a nice, violet, vibrant, reddish color. And these flowers look good. That nice, yellow rose behind it. The purple and yellow is always a good color combination. An enemy Japanica looks good with those climbing roses behind it. And I'm going to work my way around the outside of this garden. There are some daylilies there. Daylilies, I think, are well kind of under some rose bushes. They look really nice. Here's a nice tree rose with some heuchers under that one. Generous gardener. It's a climbing rose. And you see these nice plants under it. We're going to work around the outside first, guys, and then we're going to come back and do the beds on the inside. But sometimes you need big plants. When you have big roses, here you have Liberty Rose Austin. And you have a nice, hefty plant beside it to give weight to it. Everything fits. But purple is a great color companion plant for these roses because they have a lot of yellow and whites. And the purple just kind of stands out with those. The Ancient Mariner and that nice purple tall plant behind it. It's a Dutch Irish Silver Beauty. And this is a great ground cover underneath those roses, pink roses. Again, blending in with this purple again. You'll see a lot of purple replicated. 
because purple just goes really well. Purple flowers just blends well with these rose colors, especially the whites and the yellows. And here the companion plants are actually larger than the roses. So you'd have those rose blooms perking up through these larger companion plants. So you have a smaller rose here. I think it would be better if you had a slightly larger rose there at the back to kind of fill in that space so you wouldn't have that gap. But you do have the rambler along the wall behind it. It's a beautiful white salvia with a nice rose there in front of it. Geranium, it's a purple geranium. You see they repeated that purple color again and again across this garden. Blending those colors, making sure they all work together. Lady of the Lake, it's a nice climbing rambler rose back there behind it. These purple corn flowers, look at those next to these beautiful pink roses. Wisely Rose. And Morning Mist behind that. And a nice climbing rose there. But right below it is an aster, which is a nice purple color. Again, you're seeing the repeat of these colors because these are what works really well with the roses. Strawberry Hill, which is a beautiful name for an English rose. And then the poet's wife with some nice white salvias behind it. Colors blending wonderfully. Cut your parsons there. So you have a lot of reds blended in, but mostly purples as we looked at the outside. Now let's take a look at the interior. There are two interior beds here. Let's start on this end. There's a nice, wonderful old tree rose. This is grafted and this is really old. Mullinex, it's a beautiful rose. And here's some irises. Silver carpet below that. And it's gonna be a nice ground cover for these roses. And here you have roses blended in more with other plants. You can see how they fill in space and add a lot of color. Here's a beautiful, massive daylily with a nice rose behind it. Dang Judith Dench. Nice Charles Darwin rose in front of a massive cornflower there. Some black eyed Susans, yellow, blended with these white roses here. This is Kew Gardens. Single petal. A low princess sand with those nice geraniums behind it. And here you have again repeated with a purple and a pink. Sadium with nice roses there behind it. Living Rose Austin with again purple behind it. So if there's anything you're taking away is that purple flowers go really well with David Austin roses. Let's work our way down the last interior bed here inside the Lion Garden, which displays roses with wonderful companion plants. The majority of these companion plants have been purple. Scepter's Owl, which is a wonderful rose. I've grown this one before. And you can see it has those nice flowers next to it. Those colors are just blending in wonderfully. Low ground cover geraniums filling in below the roses. And 
And here is the Victorian garden. Let's come into this one. Oh, it is all parterres with shrub roses. Really beautiful. Here again, that Queen of Sweden is in bloom right now. It's a beautiful rose. But this is the new one for 2023, the Donahue. It's a beautiful kind of a yellow color. And this is the Victorian garden where the roses are behind. Low shrubs, parterred and mulched shrub roses. And here's a nice, beautiful pom-pom rose with the open pom-pom. You haven't seen a lot of those here today. Not in bloom right now. You know, anytime you come to this garden every few weeks, you'd have a different set of flowers that are actively in bloom. A lot of David Austin, most David Austin roses do re-bloom. The ladies blush. It's beautiful. Let's continue on around the outside of this magnificent Victorian garden filled with all of these wonderful David Austin roses. Now look at the petals on this one and then look at the leaves such a nice green color such a wonderful coloration on this particular rose nye bevin this one is new to me very familiar with david austin roses but this one i love the coloration the leaves are such a wonderful green color and those petals which is kind of a white with the yellow interior yellow centers beautiful rose And we can work our way now around the interior. We'll cut straight through to the center. You have some ramblers, which are gonna go up these arches. This one, these are still low, but the next arch, you can see they're a little higher. And you wanna just attach these roses. As they continue to grow, you just tie them to this arch. You have beautiful arches, rose cover arches here in just a year or two. This looks like Desdemona. This is a nice clean white color. Iceberg is a nice white rose in the US, but that's not a David Austin rose, so it won't be here. Olivia Rose Austin. Nice. And here's some freshly planted roses. These are all smaller and low, but they will fill in. These are all Desdemonas, which are gonna be wonderfully colorful as they get a little older. Again, more Desdemona which must be a very popular rose here with the gardeners. It takes up a lot of space. But let's see what this is. The country parson. Just the design here is phenomenal. A wonderful way to display these beautiful shrub roses. And they're clipped back really low, so nothing really gets out of hand and is overgrown. Let's take a quick look in across this entire garden. A 
And what's catching my eye is this rose right here. I loved incurred petals, but this is so beautiful. And the last garden we're gonna go through here at the David Austin Rose Garden is the Species Garden. And this is where you get all of your old roses that the newer roses are developed from. These are typically only blooming once a year. They're gonna be large and rambling. You may have seen them growing in the ditch, but these are your Species Roses. And this is a massive old rambler here. Look at that one stem and it is extending all the way here. These can go up to 40 feet. This is a good 20 foot on that species rose there. This one is blooming. But a lot of your newer roses were developed from your older species rose. Let's walk through the species garden here at David Austin. Nice fat rose hips. <laughs> You can make teas out of those. Again, typically single blooming. Look like we missed it a lot of the blooming for a lot of these species roses. They will be older and less refined. The shapes will be different. More than natural state. Even trim back a lot of these old species, bushes are tall, are very long. Again, these are more of what you use to make a modern hybrid teas in English roses. It's a very unique thorn on this particular rose. Here's another species rose. Since none of these species roses are in bloom, you can't really understand exactly how beautiful they are, but they are instrumental to getting us to the common modern day rose. Here's a massive rambler climbing up that tree, probably several roses climbing up that tree. And here at David Austin, they breed beautiful English roses, and here are some of the breeding houses we probably won't get a chance to tour some of those, but you can see they're, they're growing that next rose that will be, each year they bring out about one or two new roses to their line and they retire a couple. But the new ones that you will see in a few years are likely in one of these sheds and in one of these growing houses right now. David Austin is a rose breeder and they're breeding phenomenal roses here. These could be some of the test roses that they set out, check their conditioning over many years to see how they perform. Only the very best will be selected and sold to the public. And they test them over many years. And here is a massive field where David Austin, the team, growing team here, are growing numerous rose varieties and testing to see which ones are the best, which may be presented out to the public. This is also where they're likely growing the roses that they sell to the public, those that are already ready. This is where they're storing them. Just nice grow out fields. It takes a lot of space. This is a massive operation. Now, if you come here to this garden, there's also a nice tea shop available for you, and they sell roses. We may stop and get a bit of tea before we leave, but right now, we're gonna see what roses they have for sale at this wonderful, wonderful establishment. Oh, the garden room, unfortunately, is closed, so there'll be no tea for us today. But let's go and look at see what's for sale here. Oh, this is really beautiful containerized here. All these wonderful roses. Here's Bathsheba. Strawberry Hill. Best for fragrance it says. Let me give it a wonderful sniff. Oh, it's a beautiful rose smell there. The generous gardener. And here are some nice climbing roses. Malvern Hills, it's a different petal on that one. Once flowering, rambling. These are wonderful, but they will only bloom once a year.
rambling rector. It gets really large. Once flying rambling roses again. Let's see what we have on this row. More rambling roses. This one was bred by David Austin. It may bloom more than once. Doesn't say once flower, so it may get two petal, two blooms on that one. Nice climbing rose iceberg, which I was surprised is here, but iceberg here. And the generous gardener again. It's a nice red color on that one, on those leaves. Clara Austin, just a beautiful rose. And then here you have some of the tree roses, which they have for sale. Princess Anne is a tree rose. And this is blooming right now, it's so beautiful. And that is a Libby Rose Austin as a tree rose. Look at those beautiful petals on this long stem. Lady Shallot, Lady of Shallot. And that Lady of Shallot is such a fragrant rose. There's a beautiful rose smell coming from that one. We're gonna continue on. Constant spray, spry. James Galway is gone. There's only one of those left. It's a beautiful pink rose. The Pilgrim, look at that, it's a yellow color. Yellow fading into a white. Then no more your climbing roses here. If you want those to climb, you have the space for them. The Lady of the Lake, it's best for flowering because it's an English climbing rose. Wedding day, so once flowering, climbing, rambling rose. Beautiful white flower with a yellow interior. Once flowering, rambling roses. Here's a repeat flowering, rambling roses here. Oh, that looks nice. A repeat flowering, rambling rose would be nice. Again, you have to have space for these ramblers. They can grow anywhere from 15 to 40 feet. So you need room and a tall space for those to grow. More rambling roses. And these are repeat flowering rambling roses. And there's a Wallerton Old Hall. I've actually grown that rose before. And here's a nice climbing rose. Wow, such a unique color. This nice coral. Warm welcome. That's what you feel. It's a morning warm welcome. Uh, I think that's just greeting you. I would love to see that every day. Warrington Old Hall, I've drawn this rose before. It's a beautiful rose. It's a nice rose. There are some companion plants, but I think there are still more roses that we can find just right down here. Yes, there's more roses opening up. Wow, this is such a magnificent place to be. If you love roses, this is, oh my goodness. And it just opens up to even more roses. Modern shrub roses, patio miniature roses. There are some repeat flowering old roses. We're gonna move along here. Princess Alexandria of Kent. That is nice. Look at this one. It's nice, it caught my eye. It's a beautiful pom-pom, open. Look at that, wonderful. The Shepherdess, Summer Song. Again, that coral colored. And one that we saw repeated in the garden quite a bit. Lady of Charlotte, which may be one that we take home with us today. There's some Olivia Rose Austin. Wow, wow, Dee. And guys, I know you can read these names. I'm just reading them along as I go. But these are some beautiful David Austin roses. And the selection here is absolutely phenomenal. And here's even more.
And these are ideal for pots and containers. Standard archway, a doorway. Those are gonna be climbers. Six foot tall for a fence. They've broken it out, depending on what you're looking for. They have it available for you. Ideal for cutting. Growing well in pots. These have few thorns. Like have kids as I do. There aren't many thorns on these. And just look at these thorns are very small here. This is David Austin Roses, and if you love roses, you'll love this location. Hey guys, it's been a pleasure bringing this to you again. Like and subscribe, follow along, and I will keep showing you great places like this all around the world as I see them, so will you.